Stories of Great Christians. We are bringing you transcribed from the radio studios of the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago, Chapter 1, in Beautiful Upon the Mountains, the story of John and Isabel Kuhn. If you're looking for the place to register for the conference, it's uh, right in there through that door. We've got a table set up, kind of informal, but it'll do. Uh, Let me carry your suitcase, madam. You may be sorry. I brought some books along. I think it was a mistake. Ma'am, back at college, I'm earning my board by lugging trays. Don't apologize. Here we are. Registrar. Registrar. I'm coming. Got a customer for you. Yes, sir. Oh, hello there. Hello, I'm Isabel Miller. Jack Radcliffe, uh, just give Isabel her cabin number. Or I'll take care of her suitcase. Your first summer at the first conference, Miss Miller? He's a great kidder, that Mac. <laughs> it is the first summer for the furs. What cabin are you putting her in, Mac? We have every reason to believe, Miss Miller, that the furs will be the outstanding Bible Conference Center on the West Coast. Uh, let's see. Yes, here's your registration slip. Miss Isabel Miller. Oh, I see you're a foreigner. Ever been in the States before? Come on, come on. As a matter of fact, I haven't. I guess people from Vancouver don't travel much. Jack, uh, why don't you check in the kitchen? They need help with the potatoes. It's all right, Jack, really. I can carry my own suitcase. Oh, don't worry about your luggage. You're going to be in cabin seven with Edna Gish. Cabin seven? Jack, the kitchen? Uh, see you around, Isabel. We can uh, go out the side door. It's just down the path. Edna Gish is one of the conference leaders. You you don't know her? No, I really don't know anybody at all. Oh, uh, you will. Miss Gish, uh, she's uh, well. Her husband just died. It isn't easy for her, I guess. Uh, she's quite a woman. Funny they put you in with her. Well, I guess it was uh, only space left. You'll like her fine. Ah, here we are, cabin seven. In the summer of 1923, Isabel Miller came to the brand new Bible conference in the state of Washington on a quest for something. She was not quite sure what a committed Christian, and a third-grade teacher just a year out of college. She knew only that she had not truly found herself in the role of a school teacher. But certainly that summer, Isabel never expected to share a cabin with Edna Gish, a young missionary on furlough, grieving over the death of her husband. How perfectly awful for you, Edna. I mean to know you couldn't do a thing, to be right there and nothing... For a long time afterward, I kept wondering, suppose we hadn't gone swimming that day, if I hadn't wanted to take a vacation that summer. But all missionaries took their vacation right there, didn't they? Oh, yes, it was quite routine. He wanted to go as much as I did. Ellis loved to swim. He was a good swimmer. That's why he dove in for the girl. I'm a good swimmer, too. I kept diving and diving for him. I was exhausted. I couldn't find him. I'm sorry. Would you like to go out and walk around? Do you think you'd feel better? No. No, I wouldn't. I'm not going to be much fun as a cabin mate. There are some mornings, but I keep going. Do you think you ought to be leading a group here at the conference? Isabel, if God hadn't given me that group to get ready for and to think about, I don't know what I would have done. Every morning I wake up and think about Ellis... I can see those Chinese boys looking down at his body and then up at me. And, Isabel, I grab my Bible and I read and I make myself think about my conference group. Philippians. What? The book of Philippians. Paul. Oh. I read it over and over again. Rejoice always. I've made it my verse. Oh, Edna, I wish I could say something. You came here for a vacation. I came for more than that. Yes, 
course you did. You teach school in the winter, don't you? If you call it that, third grade, is that teaching? You don't like it? I do not. I wanted to be a teacher, but I never meant to get stuck in the third grade. My mother... Oh, it's a long story. So you did come here for something more? Yes. Doesn't everybody? I hope you find it, Isabel. I hope we all do. It wasn't Edna's Bible class that impressed Isabel the most. It was simply the fact that day after day, Edna somehow got the strength to get up and smile and teach that gave integrity to every word she said. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. It's as simple as that, girls. Jesus told us to do it. Just go and do it. The details in your life are up to you, but the big thing is clear. Go and preach. Can you do it? Anybody? If you will, just raise your hand. That's simple, too. Right here and now, under the pine trees and that moon that's shining over the Pacific Ocean and all the countries beyond the ocean. Anybody? Edna, I haven't any idea where this decision is going to take me. People usually don't. But for what it's worth, for what I'm worth, well, I'm saying to God, here I am. You won't be sorry, Isabel. You really won't. Why, it's Miss Miller, isn't it? Back again for your second summer at the Furs. Mac, I'm telling you, I'm getting to be quite a world traveler. Made my second time over the Vancouver Ferry. I'll see what uh, cabin they gave you this year. Here, uh, let me take your baggage. You didn't know? This year I'm on staff. Only way I could afford to come back. I'm going to wait on tables. I'll show you where the kitchen is. You don't need to bother. I know, but thanks anyway. Had a good year? Another year in the third grade. Let's leave it at that. I couldn't wait to get back here. I know what you mean. Maybe that summer, Isabel Kuhn waited on J.O. Fraser. Nobody can quite remember. But what is certain? Somehow, sometime in the summer of 1924, the paths of Isabel Kuhn and Fraser, superintendent of the China Inland Mission, crossed for the very first time. Mr. Fraser, they've put you over at that table by the window. I'll show you. Follow me. Sorry I'm late. My train was late. I'm Isabel Miller, and I'm going to be your waitress. Drink coffee? Never. I'm a Britisher, and I'll have tea, thank you. Here's your table. I'll get the tea. Hope you like hamburger, Mr. Fraser. Quite rare, please. Do you get rare hamburger in China? Uh, No, that's why I order it rare when I can. (laughs) What do you know about China? I'm impressed with the China Inland Mission. That's about all I know. Mm. You're impressed because you're waiting on the mission superintendent, Miss uh, Isabel? Hmm? No, I'm really impressed. I better get your pie order in right away. You want apple? Choice? No, jello. Apple pie? I'll get it. So, you tell me you're uh, impressed um, by China. The China Inland Mission. Mm. I don't know anything about China. What I'm curious about is this whole business of proving God by prayer. Proving him every day? That's what the mission is uh, built on. Yes. How Hudson Taylor started it, uh, the way the rest of us tried to keep it going. Well, maybe you'll know more about China before you leave the Furs this summer. You mean what you'll be talking about here? Yes. I'll learn a lot this summer, Mr. Fraser. So when I was up in uh, China's Winan province, on the border of Burma, I began to notice some strange-looking people in the marketplaces. The women wore big flowery dresses. Men and women all wore turbans, and, and they spoke another language entirely. It seems these were the Lisu tribes people. 
and they came down from the mountains of the Salween River Canyon. Now, the Salween got down from Burma into the corner of China. They were totally illiterate, and they were animists, worshipping demons. My friends, no one in the world needs Jesus more desperately than my Lisu people. And the China Inland Mission needs young men, strong, dedicated young men, to climb those mountains and take Jesus Christ to the Lisu villages there. We have families in the Winan province. We have women. God bless them all. But God send us young men. Is there one here tonight? One young man who will hear the call of the Lisu people over there in demon, worshipping ignorance. God, we leave this challenge with you. Isabel, I find it very hard to accept what you're saying is, is a call to the mission field and some vague talk about China. But as for taking money from Marjorie Harrison for some completely unnecessary courses at the Moody Bible Institute, Isabel, that's charity. And I won't see my daughter taking charity. But, Mother, I simply haven't saved enough money for what it's going to cost me at Moody. Daddy can't pay. He certainly can't. Marjorie Harrison wants to give me what she would have spent on herself if her pay health... Pay your own way or you don't go. The mission board says I must get special training. Missionaries live on charity. That's how they live. Mother, you've been president of the Missionary Society. You've raised money, taken special offerings. I can't believe this is you talking like this. Isabel, you know as well as I do, the only people that go to the mission field are the rejects. They can't get a husband or they've lost a job. Mother! You're an attractive girl, Isabel. We saw that you got a good education. University of Washington, no less. And now you want to go to Moody Bible Institute. It, it's ridiculous. It's the China Inland Mission requirement. You're ungrateful and cold, Isabel. Right in the middle of your father's trouble, you do this. Daddy's been in money trouble before. Not like this. Not a lawsuit. But he isn't guilty. It'll all be settled. You're selfish, Isabel. Cold and selfish. You'd give up a good-paying job and leave your mother like this to go off to, to maybe even China. I'm an adult. I make my own choices. You have Daddy and you have Murray. Your brother Murray needs help. He certainly can't give any. Mother, I know what I have to do. It's as simple as that. All right, Isabel. You go right ahead and do exactly what you've made up your stubborn mind to do. But you don't know what you'll be doing to your mother. Oh, oh my... I feel a great tightness in my chest, like a, a fist clenched. Mother? If you go to the mission field, Isabel, I tell you, you go over my regrets and dead body. Come on, Isabel, you're holding up the line. I'll take the dishes from your tray and you can put the silverware right in that bin, all right? Thank you. Isabel, I thought you'd waitress before. You'll have to move faster than this if you want to work in the MBI dining hall. I'm moving, I'm moving. He's too young for you anyway. Besides, John Kuhn is going to be a missionary to China. Isabel, will you move? <laughs> And so we conclude Chapter 1 of Beautiful Upon the Mountains, the transcribed story of John and Isabel Kuhn. This is another in the series, Stories of Great Christians, produced by the Department of Broadcasting of the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. Chapter 2